We welcome you today, this Lord's Day, Westwood Hills Christian Church, as we take our first scripture from John 14, 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You've just heard today's scripture reading and we turn our service over to our Reverend Joseph McCarthy of Hope International University located in Fullerton, California. Pastor Joe. Well, hey, sports fans. Are you ready for some football? <laughs> it's that season. Now, you might not be a sports fan or might not be a football fan, but there is something comforting and joyful about knowing that football is back in September where it belongs that we've got a full season ahead of us and that fans can return to the stands and they're sort of an indicator, right? Some sense that we are returning to normal, whatever our new normal is. Still lots of uncertainty though, swirling of course around COVID and how that will affect the players and the teams and the fans. But I think we're all longing, right? Longing deeply to get some sort of semblance of normalcy back in our life. On the other hand, much of my joy about football season has been overshadowed and dampened with the commemoration of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. It's hard to believe that it was 20 years ago when those attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and the plane that went down in the field in Pennsylvania. And yet, as we should, the whole country has stopped to commemorate and remember the lives that were lost that day. And I can't help as I was listening to the shows and listening to the reports of being reminded of how in that time, what was one of the more frightening and terrible, terribly devastating days in the history of our country, that for months after that, maybe even a year after that, our country was unified. In the face of an enemy, in the face of terror, we bonded together to support each other, to show love and unity. Among other things, 9-11 kind of woke us all up, right? To the reality that life is fragile, that tomorrow isn't promised, that we shouldn't take life for granted, the breath in our lungs or our loved ones, but to cherish them and to remember that every day, every breath is a gift from God. But also I think it rattled our collective nerve. I, I can't imagine for one second can't even try to imagine what it was like for people who were there, who were there at ground zero in the building or first responders. I've heard many, many stories. Almost each person says the same thing that after 20 years, they still can go right back to the overwhelming emotion of that day, just in a snap second, because it was so, so traumatic. Whether it's something major like 9-11 or COVID-19, or it's just the combination of all the things that happen to us every day that cause us to worry and stress and be anxious. It's very easy, very easy, I can confess, it's very easy for me to lose a sense of peace in my heart and in my mind. And yet the Bible makes it very clear that God wants that for us. As we've talked about over the past several months, the fruits of the Spirit, evidence of the Spirit in us, love, joy, peace, the third one listed. God has for us peace, and it's peace of mind, peace of heart. There's peace with God, and there's the peace of God. The Bible makes it very clear that these are available to us who believe. Peace with God. Now, you hear this a lot when people are on their deathbed and making their like amends with God before they die, and you hear people say, did you make your peace with God, or I made my peace with God which I think biblically that's not even the right way to say it because I don't make peace with God. God makes peace with me, right? The peace that comes in my relationship with God that gives me peace that I have 
salvation in Christ, it all comes from him. You know, it's amazing when Jesus, after his resurrection, he walks into the room with his disciples who were freaked out of their minds, thought that the, the one person that they could trust now is gone. What are they going to do? And probably they're, they're being hunted down just like he was. What's he say to him? He says, peace be with you. My peace I give to you. Now they didn't earn it. They didn't deserve it. It wasn't something that they made peace with God. God gives peace to us. So the peace with God, which we talk about, which is knowing that God has forgiven us of our sins and adopted us into his family and give us the promise of eternal life, that is a gift. It's a gift from God. God makes peace with us. <laughs> we don't make peace with him. But what we want, and I think what we seek, what I seek in my daily life is the peace that comes from God, right? The peace of God that passes understanding. I love the scripture that says, don't you have to be anxious about anything, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God, and then God will hear us, and he will give us peace that's beyond knowledge, peace that surpasses knowledge beyond our understanding. I don't know how often that has been super comforting to me that to know that the God that I love, the God that I serve, he's got it under control. And because he does, I can be at rest. I can be at peace. I may not know what the future holds, but I do know who holds the future. I may not know how it's going to play out or when, but I do know that God has it under control. And there is a peace. The peace of God is available to me that when I turn my thoughts, my mind, my prayers towards him, I can trust one that he hears me, two that he loves me, three that his answers will be exactly what I need and when I need it. And that can bring peace to my heart, peace to my soul. I can't help but think of when Jesus was in the boat on the lake with his disciples and a storm comes up and it's got to be a doozy because these were fishermen who had been through who knows how many storms in their lives, right? And they're like, where, where is Jesus? We, we might die in this storm. This is, we might sink. And somebody finds Jesus asleep in the back of the boat or in the bottom of the boat. I don't know exactly where. And they like, wake him up. Say, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to die? Don't you care that we're in this major storm? Why are you sleeping? And Jesus is like, oh, so little faith, right? Do you know who you're with? And Jesus just speaks to the storm and he says, peace, be still. And this calms the sea, the winds stop immediately. And the disciples, of course, are amazed, even though they'd been with him <laughs> quite a bit. And they're just shocked, like, who is this that even the seas and the wind obey him? Well, this is, the Bible would say, the prince of peace. Glory to God in the highest, the Bible says, when Jesus was born, and on earth, goodwill and peace to all men. He is the Prince of Peace. The, the Prince of Peace invites us to be in his family. And you know, once you're adopted into the king's family, all the benefits of the king and his son belong to you as well, which is peace. Peace for your heart, peace for your mind. First, the peace with God, which is where God has said, I forgive your sins and I cast them as far as the east from the west to be remembered no more. I will not count them against you because my son has paid for them. That's peace with God. And then God offers his peace that surpasses knowledge to carry us, to be with us when the storms are raging, when things look bleak, when we have no idea if, how we're going to get through it. God says, peace be with you. My peace I give you. And he says, it's not peace like the world gives. What's the peace that the world gives? Well, it's usually temporary, right? usually through medication or meditation or some sort of vacation, right? The, the world says, well, if you can just control the environment around you, control the chaos, find a place that is calm and peaceful and blissful, then you can find peace and rest. Well, that is true, but it just doesn't last, right? So what God is offering us, what Jesus is offering us is peace that makes no sense, that in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the chaos, when things look the bleakest and the odds are against us, that rather than being anxious, rather than being frazzled, rather than freaking out and not, you know, not being able to hold together, God says, come to me. I will give you peace that passes understanding that when things are at their worst, you're, you can still be at peace. Why? Because you know the God who's in control and you can trust that he has what's best for you in mind.
There's another story where the Apostle Paul is on a ship and he's on his way across the sea, probably to his trial and ultimately his death, and he was aware of that. And the storm comes up and everybody is freaking out. The sailors are freaking out. They're throwing stuff overboard. They're thinking, this is it. We're going to capsize. We're going to die. And who had peace? Paul. And he was trying to pass it on to the others. He was sharing peace with others, saying, hey, no need to worry. God's got this. God's under control. <laughs> so it's amazing to see that even though the disciples who had walked with God, they were freaked out in the storm, right? And God gives them his peace. Gives, first he calms the storm and provides peace for them. But there's sometimes when the storm doesn't subside and God's peace can still be with us. And then we become the dispensers of peace to those around us who in those same circumstances have nowhere to turn for peace of mind or peace in their heart. I think it's very easy for us to either deny our anxiety or or to be ashamed of it right that somehow as a person of faith i should never be anxious or i should always be at peace well <laughs> we're humans right that's god knows that that's just not going to be the case and that's why he calls us to trust on him and to receive his gift of peace and in fact i've i've heard some really good advice that when you get anxious when you feel that your peace is gone when your peace has been shattered in your life that actually is a great sign. It's an indicator that now is the time to reach out to God, right? To embrace his peace, to ask for it, and to receive it into your life. So don't deny the fact that you're anxious. Don't deny the fact that there's conflict. Rather, let that be an indicator that now is when I need God more than ever. Now is when I need his peace, and he offers it freely. He offers it freely to you, and it's it's not peace as the world gives, right? It's peace that passes understanding. Even when Jesus appeared after his resurrection to Thomas, who said, I'm not going to believe unless I see his hands and feet myself, Jesus offered peace to Thomas as well. It's very comforting to know that we don't have to earn it, right? We don't have to somehow be worthy of God's peace, but he offers peace to us freely when we need it the most. There's a story of a king who summoned all the great artists from the realm for a contest. He wanted somebody to paint him the ultimate picture of peace. And so the artist went to work. And after all the submissions were given, it was sorted. And it came down to two paintings, two finalists. And one was this beautiful, serene painting of a mirrored lake where the trees and the sky and the clouds were mirrored perfectly in this placid, mirror-finished lake. And it was gorgeous and it was serene. And it definitely emitted the feeling of peace. The painting next to it was quite different. Craggy rock mountains, very harsh terrain, a tumultuous waterfall, storm clouds, and the people who were around were wondering, how did this become a finalist? I don't see peace there anywhere. And the king said, but look closer. And as they focused in on the picture, they realized that tucked in behind the waterfall in the crag of a rock where this dead tree stem was sticking out, there was a nest. And in the nest, a mother bird feeding her baby bird, completely at rest, oblivious to the harsh terrain and surroundings. And the king said, now that's what peace looks like. And that's the painting that won the contest. And I love that illustration because that's really the peace that God is offering us. That's the peace that Jesus is giving to his disciples. Not peace as the world gives, but in spite of the storms of life, in spite of all the craziness, the wind and the waves figuratively that bash against our hearts and our soul, that makes us anxious, that cause conflict, whether it's internal or external with people or with circumstances, God says, my peace I give to you. Is there peace in your heart and in your mind today on a regular basis? If there's not, that's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just an indicator to go to the source, the source of true peace, true and lasting peace. Isaiah even calls it a perfect peace, right? Peace that does not come from anything that we could conjure up or create, but peace that comes from God, who is our peace, from Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. So what would that look like when times are anxious, when you're feeling conflicted, when you're in turmoil, that rather than get anxious, you were able to stop and go to the source of true peace and say, God, I need you now more than ever. I receive 
the gift of peace that you offer. Let your peace fill my heart and my mind and keep me from the anxious thoughts that buffet against my soul. How would that affect you, right? How would that affect your everyday life? How would that affect your relationships? How would it affect your mindset and the way you face the storms in life? Jesus is with you. Sometimes you think he's sleeping, but he's got it under control. So that when you are in a storm, it's not the wind or the waves you need to focus on, but on the Lord of the wind and the waves. The wind and the waves must obey him, right? And he says to them, and to you, peace, be still. Allow the peace of God to fill your heart and to fill your mind to overflowing so that you then can be a dispenser of peace in the most troubled times and the most to the most troubled people in the most troubling circumstances. Evidence that the God of peace is alive and well in you. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling me your child. Please guide us to create and seek peace in everything we do. Bless us, please, with your grace and your strength to help us to want to cultivate peace for everyone around us all. I love you, Master. I pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Well, family, this concludes today's worship service. Enjoy this week in utter safety while walking in wisdom. Please join us again next Sunday. May God Almighty be with you. Take care.